about how we can coach ourselves, how we can improve our surfing by self-analysis. It's going to be a fun night, so we're going to wait for a few people to, to rock in. If, so if you are in, make sure that you put a little comment in the box, let us know that you are here. And for those of you that are watching on replay, I'm just going to quickly remind you, as I always do, that if you haven't subscribed to us yet on YouTube, there is a button somewhere, where else is the YouTube button? Here it is here. If you haven't subscribed yet on YouTube, then make sure you head over there, subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit that notification bell as well so that you get notified whenever any of the coaches eyes videos come out and we're also planning on creating some additional content in the coming weeks we started to script out some some new ideas of content that we're going to create down at the beach because we're starting to repair clayton's hands getting yep. better on the mend and uh you might have if you're on facebook you might have seen the picture today of clayton's hand took all the uh bits and pieces off do you really want to yeah okay oh there it is there so uh, it hasn't, there it is, it's focused in, keep it still. Look at that, that is zigzagged. The good news is my, my pinky's working, everything's uh, working. Luke, the main man, Luke is on. Luke, how you doing buddy? How you doing? Okay, cool. Well, anyway, let's, let's, let's jump into this. Let's jump yeah. into tonight. So as I say, it is all about being able to coach ourselves. Whereabouts is the best place to start here? I, I mean, I well, think- that you had a trip down to Melbourne. Yes, I was down so, in Melbourne. How did that go? Mond what is that? Day? Wednesday. So I was, I was down in Melbourne on Monday and Tuesday. And while I was down there, I had the opportunity to quickly go to the wave pool. I didn't surf the wave pool, but I went to the wave pool to have a watch and look at some people surfing. And it how was- How did that make you feel? <laughs> oh, no, I'm so pumped to, to surf down there at the wave pool. It was very interesting though, watching people surface. I was watching an intermediate session and I have videoed a lot of the intermediate session. So if you were on Monday afternoon surfing at the Melbourne wave pool on the right hand wave in the afternoon, sort of about four o'clock, four, five o'clock, then the chances are I was probably watching you and filming you. So you might appear on tonight's, on tonight's live, but yeah, it was interesting, but we'll get into that a bit in a moment. But I do see that the wave pool is being a huge opportunity for people oh, to be able to coach themselves. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Yeah. Just because um, a lot of people don't have access to a crew who could video film them or, or the gear or the time. Mm. And a lot of the surf spots, you don't have cameras long enough. But with the wave pools, you can actually just walk up with your iPhone and have someone film you from the wall. Yeah. And you get great footage. Really good footage. Yeah. Like from my iPhone, just standing there, just near the takeoff zone, it was... Yeah, I was, I was getting some great footage. And so we got Carve Media. Good day, Carve Media in. Uh, we got Hi from Derbs. Andy's in the house as well. Andy, I believe that you're going down to the wave pool very soon. And Alan from the sunny coast. Uh, Donovan, felt like Good a proper cook in my session this morning. Looking forward to the golden nuggets and the motivation. So uh, Donovan, I'll be really interested actually if you can comment underneath as to what setting you're on were you at the intermediate or advanced or i think they run a couple of expert sessions uh, yep. which are which which would be interesting to see uh, let's have a look what else we've got here sunny coast alan thompson in the sunny coast let's do a few more of these uh, we've got spain ben's over there in spain hey ben yeah andy he's a weekend after next absolutely yeah yeah it should, should be frothing it's it's it looks so much fun Oh God, I'm so excited. Mine does actually the um, one of the technicians who helped build the wave garden. Uh, Armando is. Yeah. Armando. Right, so how are you going, Armando? It's uh, it's very good. It's very good. Okay. So. Okay. Let's let, let's jump into. Yeah, let's jump into some content. Let me, let me remove all the comments. We sort of said hello to everyone. Uh, anyway, Stephen, someone's actually going. Hi, Clay. So Stephen, secret land. From the land of secrets. Uh, uh, he's from Reunion Island. Well, so, no, he's from the secret land. Uh, he's okay. French. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Anyway, so yeah, let's let's was in the water at the spit. Oh, okay. So Donovan wasn't at the, down at the down okay. the Okay. Where much do you want to start with with coaching ourselves? Well, phew, tell you what, let's just play a wave, and let's just start asking a few questions. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think having awareness is one thing, but then someone might go, hey, look, you've got a problem with your bottom turn, but then it's like, how do you fix it? Mm. So it's easy enough to identify some issues, 
but we want to see are we identifying the right issues and what is the fix for that person? How do they go about on that journey of correcting their surfing? Yeah. Well, before we show the wave, I think one of the really big mistakes that a lot of people make is they don't video themselves. Yeah. They, they yeah. just, they go by what they think they are surfing like and what you and think you surf like. It's totally different how it looks. Yeah, really different. And I mean, think about the first time that you ever heard your own voice played back to you and you went, oh my word, I don't sound like that. It's exactly the same with surfing in that what you think you surf like is completely different to the reality of, of how you actually look when you are surfing. And uh, I mean, the guys down at, at, at the wave pool, you could see the big smiles on their faces as they were going yeah, down these waves. Um, and they thought that they were they were that they were shredding and the reality is is they weren't really shredding and so we will <laughs> Shame. we will show some of sh sh some of that show some of that so first thing is, is videotaping self and then in the research for this live i was doing a bit of um trying to sort of come up with some of the ideas some of the things that i've noticed in my work with coaching people with public speaking because a lot of that involves people being videoed and having it played back so that they can analyze it and one of the things that came up was something called the, the, the Dunning-Kruger effect, which is, which is a cognitive bias where we, there's, there's two sides to the spectrum. But that's where somebody who has learned a bit of information think that they're way better than, than they actually are. So like my 14-year-old son knows everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's need to laugh, but he knows absolutely everything. He'll tell me how to do stuff. But Dad, then it, you should have done this. You should have done that. Yeah. And then at the other end of the it. spectrum, you've got the people that, that have really good knowledge and they're really good, but then they under they underestimate their ability. So you've got this, it, it's called the, the, the Dunning-Kruger effect. And I think that this comes up a lot with some people, they, they, they might learn a couple of little things that they've watched on YouTube. And then all of a sudden they think that they're experts. And one of the fastest ways to learn, and a lot of you are doing this in the Surfax group, is to put your ego at the door, or in our case, surfing, leave your ego at the shore, and allow yourself to be given that constructive feedback. And also, make mistakes. Yeah. There's so many people, like we're gonna play some wave pool yeah. waves, but almost everyone rides from the outside all the way, really safely, on the shoulder, and they, they don't put themselves out of their comfort zone. They, they mm. try to surf excellently within the comfort zone. And if you don't fall, you aren't making any mistakes, you're not doing any learning. Yeah, which, okay, before we get into showing any of the footage then, this is a really good time, because a conversation that you and I had was reframing what we see as being a wasted wave. Yeah. Because uh, as you've just said, a lot of people, especially down, well, at, down, at, down at the wave pool, they'll get out their race. Let, let's jump into wave okay. first, because- Let's show a wave. Yeah. So cue anywhere, I don't mind, we've got anywhere tons of waves, okay. so any waves at all. If, if any of you were surfing and I've happened to bring you up on camera, I apologize uh, in advance, but it's all, for the, it's all for the good of the group. Okay, so let's... So here we go. We're going to go was, through heaps of waves. This was okay, Monday so. afternoon, Melbourne wave pool, right hand wave, about four o'clock. So that, that guy actually, he surfs a cast, not too bad. Let's watch this person. Whoa. Okay, so let's go back on that. Right. So on the takeoff, he's looking down. So right over there, if I zoom in a little bit, see how his whole body posture, hands pointing down? Mm -hmm. So when he lands, he, he goes almost, he goes to the bottom of the wave, but he doesn't create any speed. Mm. So he's just dropped in. He should have a ton of speed, but he's got no speed at all. And it, there's a bit of a wobble on the landing. So if you watch here, See that wobble there, like watch the board bounce. It hits the water and it actually bounces. I don't know if you can tell there. So from flat, the board yep. does a bounce. Now the reason why it bounces is that his body language told the board to almost like sort of penetrate the water and he's bent his back. So he's kind of hit a bit of a wobble. Yeah. Had his back have been straighter, he would have had way more balance. And then he needs to bend his knees a little bit. So I would say, if you jumped off a table and landed with the bent back, you'd almost have to lock your legs to support the back bend. So what's happening, okay, yep. he's kind of got like this like shock when he hits the water. Yeah. But if you jumped off the table and you had your back straight and you softened your knees, 
you would land a hell of a lot more lighter. So the big problem with this guy is that he um, he's not stacking and he's landing really, really heavy and you can see that by, by how the board sort of bounces. Okay, so step two, where's the guy looking? Way down here. Do you know what that's called? The future. <laughs> Do you know what this is? This is well within his strike range. In other words, if he jumped, he could potentially go up or he could go forward or he could cut back. Anything within this circle is within his strike radius. So in other words, if you're a boxer, that's kind of where you can punch, kick, attack. Mm. He's kind of looking way out over here in, into the future. Yep. Really hard to surf there. Okay, so he, he does kind of like a bottom turn, but he's still at the bottom. Mm. And then he tries to, I don't know what he does there. He, it kind of looks like he's... Can we zoom out a little bit? So, yeah, we can. Yeah. We can get a bit more so of what's going on. it looks like he's sitting on a chair. Yep. Okay, so it's like he's at work still on the, on the, at the desk behind the, on a mouse. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing that suggests actually forward speed. So in actual fact, all his weight is centered over the back foot over there where he's sitting. So his board just has a bit of a stall. Now, a skateboarder dropping into that ramp would go straight. Oops, a skateboarder dropping into that ramp would go straight down. But he's looking towards the future. Mm angling towards the future so he's not getting any speed out of that turn yeah okay so having said all of that what do you think is this guy's biggest problem on this particular wave if you could fix one thing where do you think his problem lies oh let us know in the comments actually so, so in the comments so let's go wave one what do you think this guy's problem is? Yeah, now, so so obviously tonight's episode is, is all about how do you coach yourself. So let's just say, so let's take it now from the perspective of we're this guy. Yep. We've, so so tip number one in coaching yourself is first of all, film yourself. So this guy, he's gone to the wave pool. His friend or or, or, or girlfriend or, or mum, dad, whatever, whatever's going on. Take yep. off hip mobility. Bottom turn. Okay, but let's just say that he, so he's, he's gone to the wave pool, he's then got out after his session, yep. and he's had a look at this footage, and now he's about to coach himself. Yeah. What is it that he needs to look at so that he can coach himself, rather than just go, oh yeah, I was looking at the wave. Because you look at this with a different eye than everybody yeah. else. Yeah. So, so what do we need to, what do we need to do? To, to be able to coach ourselves, Putting ourselves in the mind of this guy. So what do we do? If, so if let's, he let's came to the things. if he came to my house and had a session with me, do you know what the first thing I'd make him do? I'd make him jump onto a bosu ball. Because every time he jumped onto an unbalanced surface and he bends his back, he's just going to fall over. Okay. So he needs to learn how to balance, and the way you balance on a bosu ball is just by straightening your back and by aligning your skeletal system. So do you, know, do you understand what I mean by that and, and yeah, aligning yeah. your skeletal system? So let, let's zoom into this posture. I'm just, I'm just bringing up the comments. As we do this, I'm bringing up the comments at the same time. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is put a circle by each of his joints. Okay, so from the shoulder to the hip, to the knee, to the ankle, look how unbalanced this guy is. Yeah. Whereas if he just stood up straight, like that, he'd have so much more balance. And then all you'd need to do is, as he drops into the wave, is just bend the knees and keep your back straight so you've got mm. balance. So what's happening with this particular surfer, he is not using his skeletal system well. He's using his muscular system. So what I mean by that is that if, if you... Let me, let me bring you up full screen a minute. Yeah. Right, let's bring you up full screen. Okay, so if you stacked your bones on top of each other, you'd have better balance. But yeah, as, soon, oh. as soon as you bend... We haven't got any Jenga blocks, have we? No. But as soon as you bend over, you actually get heavier. So had he have just stacked his body in a straight line, he would have been better balanced. Mm. But because he's kind of doing this... I can't... Oh, open it. <laughs> because he's doing that, what's happening is he's just falling over the whole time. But had he have just stacked and kept it nice and straight, he would have really, really good balance. So the, the great thing about 
jumping onto a BOSI ball, which is an unbalanced yeah. surface, you can also see whether your weight's balanced forwards. In other words, you, you're accelerating or back where you may be stalling or left to right where you, you're kind of just wobbling. Yeah. So yeah, um, he does need to maybe strengthen his, his leg muscles to support the bends yeah. and stop using his back so much. Yeah. Now, before we go into any more of this, so you've just mentioned BOSU. And so what we're going to reference a lot tonight is is elements from the accelerated surf program which is the surf program which you have put together and there are a number of different modules within this and you would have heard us talk about the oreo before you'd have heard us talk about the cardboard surfer coffee the, the, the coffee cup um the bosu then there's all the ramp stuff now these are all elements of of the accelerated surf program and what i have found is that we really overcomplicate how yeah. surfing is done and by just making a few simple things so by focusing on okay i'm just gonna focus on standing on a bow suit can, for, I, can for, I show for, you how simple it is yeah all right so if you were to pick up a heavy object you would bend your knees and not your back correct if you're doing it correctly yes correctly yeah, yeah. so we all know that we've yeah. been taught it so you want to bring it up yeah so this guy over here in theory he, he would like to go up there yeah. Now, if he bent his knees and extended, he'd go up. But what he's done is he's bent his back, and he limits how far his knees can now go up. If his back was straighter, he could compress, extend, and he could utilize the full, the full scope of his body to actually get himself up there. Yeah. So he's using poor technique. Now, the thing is, he knows how to do it properly. He's, he's been doing it all his life if he picks up heavy stuff. So the big thing about the accelerated surfing is we're just taking techniques that you really know yeah. is the correct way to do stuff yeah. and just applying it to surfing. Yeah. Things like you saying riding a bike. Yeah, steer. It's Look like where stuff, you're going. It's stuff that you already know. And so I think one thing that's really important when it comes to to self coaching is obviously so you've got this this video side of things and this analysis. So yeah. you go you go out surfing, you video it, you go back and, and you look. But I think that a lot of people then try to fix everything in one go. They're like, oh, how can I fix it, fix it, fix it? And they think of all this stuff. And then the next time they go out into the water, they then don't really know what to focus on because they're trying to focus on too much. And I know that with your yeah. coaching, one of the things that you get everyone to do, like, like when you call them in from the water, you're like, oh, on the next one, just do this. Or you might give them two things if you think that they can handle it. But normally it's just one thing. And it's something yeah. that's really simple. Just like, just match your hands with the angle of the wave. Yeah. Open up this arm more. So it's always just one do, thing. Do you know what I think happens in surf, surfing is that because it's so easy and the person can't do it, they get extremely frustrated with themselves hmm. and then they lose their minds and the body locks up. You almost, so, so, so hang on, you're, so you're saying surfing's easy? Yes. So whenever you've done the <laughs> technique... I'm, I'm, okay, wait, I'm, so, waiting, I'm waiting to see what, what comments when, going there. When you apply the right technique, it is ridiculously easy. Okay, but if you go about it applying the wrong technique, it is extremely difficult. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, the techniques that I'm asking them to use in surfing are the same techniques that you'd use in everyday life, like picking up a heavy box. Bend your knees, not your back. Okay, now, interestingly, and there's a, there's a comment that's, that's come up here. So, this is good, Jared. Yep. The pool feels a lot different to ocean waves. A lot of the Clayton stuff needs, needs adjusting for the pool, I find. A proper bottom turn is very difficult at Tullamarine. Yes, okay. So... Oh, this is interesting. I'm gonna, all right, so let's, let's look at okay. a few oh, of the I'm other guys. The other. Hang on, the other. Exciting. Okay, so wave one. Yep. What does the guy need to do? Is probably just jump on a Bosu ball and learn how to straighten his back. Okay, yep. All of the body functions will work better with the straight back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so done. That's well, let's have a look at this, this whole bottom turn thing. So let me bring Jared's question back up on the screen again. So Jared Ooh. is saying, the pool feels a lot different to ocean waves. A lot of the Clayton stuff needs adjusting for the pool, I find. A, bo a proper bottom turn is very difficult at Tullamarine. So anybody who's not watching who uh, from outside of Australia, Tullamarine is urban surf wave pool. Uh, Tullamarine is just whereabouts it is. So I've surfed the wave pool back in the UK. And I would agree with you, Jared, in that the waves do feel different if to me and the wave pool in bristol isn't as powerful as as the one down at urban surf but it didn't feel like the wave had traveled 
hundreds of miles across the ocean. It, it yeah, felt like it was a short term. Yeah, weaker. it felt yeah. like it was a, it was a fresh wave. So there was a, a slight difference there. And my first couple of surfs in Bristol, yes, I struggled a little bit on those okay. first few takeoffs. So let's have a look at this guy paddling into the wave now. Uh, okay, we will revisit the bottom turn when I get the right wave for it. Okay. Okay. Joe, so, we will, so we will come back to you, Joe. We are going there, but check, check this dude out. Now, before you have a look at him, let's just look at the wave. Okay, so the wave crests and it peaks and it starts to break here. This is the first part of where the wave breaks is over there. Yeah. Okay. Um, it hasn't broken there. He's actually kicked and broken the lip there. So if you go back, you'll see it's his splashing and kicking. But it actually falls down. Oh, you can't see it with the arrow. See there? It actually falls down first over there, right against the wall. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which says that the steepest part of the wave is against the wall, and you should be able to paddle in closer to the wall. Yeah, so I, now I'm saying this without surfing the wave pool um, down at Urban Surf, but, the, but when I was surfing the one in Bristol, I was taking off pretty close to the wall. What I noticed yeah. down at um, Urban Surf was everyone was taking off two and a half, I'd say about two and a half to three meters away from the wall. And I was, I was wondering why, I'm not sure why. Okay, so. Until I've been in there. I've... Which way is the water flowing? Water is flowing that, whoopsie. Let's get my little arrow out. Water is flowing that way. Yep. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. It is definitely not flowing that way. Mm -hmm. So what our mate does here is he's so nervous and anxious, he starts to paddle sideways against the flow of the wave. Okay, water is, however, kind of a little bit drawing up the face and throwing down. Okay, yeah. so he's never going to be able to drop in that wave with his trajectory like that. Where's he looking? Towards the safety of the shoulder. Where's he paddling? Towards the safety of the shoulder. Is he going to get any speed on the takeoff? No. So what he does is he just paddles, goes for the barrel roll over the falls. So notice how he, he kind of free falls in. Now, he's paddling really hard. He ha is not doing Oreo biscuit. In actual fact, his feet are kicking in the air. And if you look at his feet, if I zoom in there, he's got one foot to the left, one foot to the right. So the wave can't push him. All it's doing is it's lifting him up and throwing him over the falls. Mm. So had he have paddled straighter, he would have caught the wave a lot easier with less paddling. Right. The thing is, by going straight down there, people get nervous, they get scared, they get anxious, and they freak out about going to that bottom part of the wave. Okay, so I'm interested here. So Carve Media has put, never go to the bottom of a wave pool wave until halfway down the line. So is that, so Carve Media, are you saying that that is what you think? I, 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 I don't, is that like a statement? Is that like a, a, a tip that you're saying? Or is like what, give me some context on that comment. Okay, so let, let's, can, let's zoom you. out. All right, so let's look back at this guy. All right, check us out, Ant. <laughs> Oh, this is interesting. So Andy, Andy Fort, wave pools are a massive headspace challenge. Oh, I oh, agree. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there is, yeah, there are so many eyeballs on you and you don't want to be that one guy that messes up the wave. Okay, so let's look at point one. All right, we're not going to go into that. Clayton wants to talk about the wave. Okay, so one, <laughs> two, three. Let's go. One, two, three. Okay. At stage one, the wave's never going to close out. It's not running away. It's not moving fast or anything. At stage two, you've still got all the time in the world. It is not running out. It is not closing out. And at stage three, you still have time to go straight down and do a bottom turn. So it's slow moving. Like you've got all the time in the world to go straight to the bottom, bottom turn, and do your top turn. Mm. Okay, so when this guy was paddling into the wave, those are the things that you're looking for in the paddling. Is you, you're trying to read. So in, in this particular wave, in this instance, I disagree with do one pump. Okay, so imagine Tony Hawk dropping into a skate ramp. Hey, Tony, do me a favor. Don't drop in and get your speed. Just take a hard line, get one pump in, then drop in. So where does a skateboarder get their speed from? Well, from going straight down. Correct. Okay, so if you go straight down and you compress and then you extend, okay, let me, let me, you're going let me, to get your speed. You okay. That, okay. Now I'm gonna now I'm now okay. So I'm gonna come in now as 
as the the challenger here because what I would instantly be thinking here is yeah okay fair enough a skateboarder goes straight down in order to get their speed but in most cases a skateboarder is then going straight back up so I mean, let me show you that with that so they're going down the half pipe then, but then but then they are actually just going straight back up the other side yeah and how do they do that what technique do they use and they lift. compress extend and they, lift your arms yeah okay but so so the, the, the reason why I'm I'm, I'm just questioning that because that's where instantly where back to my head went is because they're going down and up but they're not having to they're not going down to the bottom of the, the half pipe yep. and turning to then come back up that same one yep. so that's the only reason so we can yeah. do that in water because water's malleable okay, okay. Yeah. and our boards have rocker in it and okay this is the exciting thing if your board goes straight, it slows down. But when you put your board on rail, that rocker turns you. So when you drop into the wave and you do this, that is what your board's designed to do. That particular yeah. movement is designed to roll and turn. It's not designed to do, if you watch the next guy, what, check us out. Let's choose him out a little bit. There we go. So it's also pretty shallow. Okay, look at this guy, stress, stress, paddle, stress, paddle, stress. Do you know why he's stressing so hard? He's sitting in the wrong spot. Had he been over here, he would have caught the wave so much easier. Mm. Now, somebody did say actually about the wave pool in Bristol. Oh, sorry, hang on. I didn't even bring the iPad up. Go, go back, go back, because I don't know what you're talking about. I wasn't on my game. I was too busy. Oh, don't worry, I'll just get the next guy. I was guy. too busy just looking at the iPad without showing you guys, sorry. Um, Stephen, uh, back in the UK, wave, wave pool... Sorry, wave Bristol on expert setting is hard to take off against. Okay, the wall. so so check this guy. For example, he does that that one pump thing. All right, so he takes off. Okay, now notice he's he's at the bottom of the wave and he's standing flat on the board. Your board is not designed to do that. Okay, it's got rocker in. It's going to slow you down. Mm -hmm. Now, as he stands up, now start your bottom turn there. Before you ride down the wave to the bottom, bottom turn now. Put your board on rail. Lean. Snowboarders do it. Wakeboarders do it. They all go on rail. Okay. Can I, can I jump in here a second? Yes. So, I don't know about you guys, but I'm just going to try, try. I'm just going to clear up some confusion here. Because so, so you said this a couple of times now. Um, I've been hanging around you long enough now to kind of get an idea of, of what you mean. But you're saying go straight to the beach. Okay. Yes. So so. And obviously, uh, go straight. So drop straight in down the wave. So like yeah. a skateboarder, you go straight down. Correct. So, so you but, do but, but then what you're saying that. is to this guy is start your bottom turn now, but then he's starting his bottom turn halfway down. So stop standing on your board. Put on rail. Okay. So you, you're still going straight down the wave, but on you're your going toe edge. But you're going down on your toe edge. Yeah. So I just wanted to clear that up because I know that it was something that really confused me initially. Um, when Clayton was explaining it, he was saying, just go straight to the beach, put your nose to the beach. But then he was saying to me, now start your bottom turn. And I was like, but you've told me to go nose to the beach. Okay, so, all right. I hope that was helpful. On the Waterman course that we designed, yeah. we, we talk about body surfing. Yeah. How do you stay on that wave body surfing and get to go along it? Don't you have to lean? Yeah, by leaning. Okay, so the equivalence of what he needs to do now is lean. Okay, so yeah. you start your bottom turn and you start your lean earlier. When you do that, your board will turn and it will go faster. Yeah. So in other words, you're going to get speed and drive up that wave. Does that make more sense? Yeah. Okay, watch what old mate does. He takes off. He kind of goes to the flat part of the wave and just stands. Okay, so all that takeoff speed is burnt off. It's, it's gone. He's, he, he can't get it back. It's like when he goes snowboarding and you're at the bottom of the mountain and you're trying to go fast. Mm. not going to happen. So now he has to try and move his body. It's like being on a bicycle and having to pedal. So he goes, boom, mid-face. Right, so someone says, get speed to a pump. So he's done his... And now, where is he? No man's land. Yeah. Okay. So to just, just, just to clarify, from experience at... At Melbourne, the powerfulest point I found is the halfway point. I try to load up at the start by staying in the upper two thirds and then engage a decent bottom turn to top snap. Okay, so this is Melbourne wave pool, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Melbourne. Okay, so let's let's check it out. 
So John John and Italo and all those guys would be taken off here trying to do the first turn there. The biggest problem with intermediates is they take off on the shoulder because they're scared of taking off deep and they go mid-face, mid-face, mid-face. And now they get all excited. I'm safe. Okay, things are good. I'm not falling off. And they try to big turns on a really safe, flat mm -hmm. part of the wave. So do your turn now, mate, please. Why do this? Why? Why do that? Oh. Okay, so Armando's asking, did you see anyone doing it right? Could you mark up the staging of paddles? We'll capture the board, compress and extend during uh, bottom and top turns while showing the wave breaking. Okay, so it's, it's kind of hard, but okay. To be honest with you, in the time that I was there, through my eyes, so through my intermediate eyes, there wasn't anybody that really stood out. Every, every single person that I watched surfing made it look stressful and, 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 and hard, like they were having to put a lot of effort into it. Okay, let's, let's look at this guy over here. All right, so. Let me bring this comment back down. Where is he on the wave? Middle. Yeah. Okay, and he's on the back foot. You can see all his weight is stacked on the yeah. back foot. Yeah, I did okay. notice that there was a lot of back foot surfing in the pool. So he, he's basically stalling and losing any speed. Mm. All right, so imagine you get, you get served a real nice big bowl of food. What's your favorite dish? Is it pasta? What, what do you like eating? Let's just say pasta just for... Okay, so you've got a big bowl know. of pasta, right? And all you do is you eat one line down the center of the pasta and you leave food on the left and the right side. Does that make any sense? Or you get a cake and you just eat one strip down the cake and you leave the left and the right side all to itself. Does that yeah. make any sense? It doesn't, although sometimes I will chew the chocolate off the outside of a Kit Kat before I eat the wafer. <laughs> That's different. That's a different technique. You still eat everything. My point being is that here you have a surfer who has the top of the wave, the bottom of the wave, which is where you get all your speed and power from. Okay. And they aren't using that. Yep. They are just using the middle. Okay. I get that. Let me try and reel this back to tonight's topic. How do we coach ourselves? So all of these people, this is great. Like, like and if you are watching tonight and you realize that this is you, this is great because you're getting some free coaching here. But what I want to know, and for the benefit of everybody here, so let's say that somebody is, they've got the accelerated surf program. Okay, so well, to bring this well what, what, the, what's uh, what's really screaming at me over here? No, no, hang, hang on a second, hang on okay. a second, just before you carry on coaching, because what I want people to understand. So let's say that they've got the the Ombi Surf program. Yeah. So they've they they know about Bosu, they know about cardboard, all the different things that you teach. That is great, and that is fantastic. If they try and do it all at once, they're going to end up messing it up. So how can we? As surfers, if we've got this little bit of video footage, how can we analyze ourselves? How do we look at it with a coach's eye as intermediate surfers without that experience? Okay, so again, OMBI stands for Ocean, Mind, Body and Equipment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your body is the one thing you have 100% control over. These guys aren't controlling their body as well. Okay, so you need, you need to look at it in terms of right, what can I do to make my moves more functional or moves more easier. Yeah. Now, the second thing is the wave part of it, okay? Yep. This guy, he's using half a wave. So he's only getting half the speed and tapping into half the wave's energy. Yep. If he used the entire wave, he'd get way more speed. He'd have way more space and way more time. Mm-hmm. Um, so that we covered ocean, we've covered body, his equipment, he's not using his board for what it's designed for. If anything, he's just standing on it, putting the brakes on the entire ride. Yep. Okay. So that's ocean, mind, body. I mean, uh, so, so what, the one thing that, we, that we've missed out is mind. Yes. Okay. So mm. he's not comfortable because yeah. he's running away from the pocket, which is the best part of the wave. Okay, that, that's like, I don't even know a, a comparison for it. Normally I've got some stupid thing to say, but I'm upset. <laughs> He's running away from it. Look, John John would be hitting this. Oh, stay in the pocket, gentlemen and ladies, please. Take your hands out your pockets, but stay in the pocket. 
Um, so so let, me just, let me just get get rid of this here for a minute because as you were saying that, I, I was kind of thinking, okay, okay so I, I'm gonna, let me just get that, let me get Stephen's comment off of the screen there for a second. I'm gonna leave that, that link up. So if you, if you are interested in the Accelerated Surf Program, the link is on the screen just over here underneath Clayton. As you were saying that, with OMBI, Ocean Mind, Body and Equipment, would it be, so we could, if, so let's just say now that the, the way that you coach yourself is you, you've got to have video footage because your memory of what you did versus what really happened is completely different. So you've got a bit of video footage. Yeah. We watch that video footage back. If you were to, and so let me, let me just try and tell you how I do coaching for public speaking and then I'm going to combine it then into how we can do it for surfing. Okay. So if I'm teaching somebody how to, or coaching somebody on how to be a better public speaker, we film their performance, we film them, them doing a, a presentation on stage. I then get them to watch the footage back, watching it and listening to it. And then we take notes and I get them to look at what they think they, they could do better and what they did well. I then ask, I then say to them, okay, turn the phone over or, to, or turn the video, the, like the screen off and just listen to it. So you're actually going to listen to yourself. What do you hear that you're doing well? What do you hear that you're not doing so well? Then they watch it, but turn the sound off. So they're getting a visual. So that, that, that way there, they get, a, they get to really sort of dive in deep. We can, do it, we, we can do exactly the same. So if you get a bit of video footage, you go, first of all, I'm, I'm not going to look at my, the, 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 my technique so much. But first of all, ocean. Whereabouts was I on that way? Yeah, you know, okay. So, 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 I agree with you 100% here. So okay. this is what someone told me. If you take yourself off that wave, or when a wave travels through the ocean and gets to the shore, it's, it's a perfect wave because it's traveled so many miles. It's a miracle of nature, mm. right? When you surf that wave, you need to make it look better. You can't make it look worse. Mm. So you want to bring out the good qualities of that wave. Yeah. So you almost want to take yourself off that wave and have a look at, what does that wave work? What, what's, it, what's its intrinsic value? Mm. And, and where is it worth the most? And that's where you want to be situated on that wave. Yeah. Half the people who have paid the money at Urban Surf to surf that wave should get money back because they only got to surf the worst <laughs> part of it. I don't think Urban Surf will be up for that. But so... So just when you're so when you're analysing your footage back, write down on a piece of paper: ocean, mind, body, equipment. Easy to remember. Ombi. So ocean, mind, body, equipment. Then watch your footage back, only focusing on the ocean. Whereabouts was the wave breaking versus whereabouts you were positioned on it? What was that wave doing that maybe you could have done something differently? Also look at what you did well, and to write down a couple of things: what you did well, what you didn't do so well. Then watch it again. And, and when it comes to mind, what I would say here is almost kind of write something down after you've been in the surf, especially at the wave pool. Um, whoever that was earlier on who said it really messes with your head. Yeah, there is this. So when you're out in the pool, did you feel this stress that you didn't want to fall off in front of the other people because you didn't want to mess up the waves? But then take it out into the ocean and were you feeling scared that day? So whereabouts was your mind? And I think that comes more from journaling, not so much from watching. So, again, your mind in the water should be focusing on fun because you want to find that feeling. Um, if you watch kids play, they're so in their moment that you know there could be bombs going off, they wouldn't even hear it mm. because they, they're so entrenched in what they're doing. And that's how a surfer should be on the wave. They yeah. should not have their mind plagued with um, social fear. Oh, yeah. I can't fall off, the whole crowd's gonna be upset with me. Yeah. Or they, they shouldn't be focused on the physical fear. Oh, I can't hit the, the concrete at the bottom of the wave or, or crash into the wall. You want to actually surf that wave for how the wave feels. Mm. And you want to be present in the moment. So like the guy on that wave, he, he was rushing away from it. And I'm like, well, what are you scared of? Why, why are you running to the safe shoulder when you could be surfing the pocket? Yeah. So that, that again is not a physical fear, but something is making him fearful and run. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. With the mind... I as a, it is it is like you can see tension. Yeah. Like when when I was watching all your surface, I could see that there was tension in their body. But what's really going on inside that person's mind? So so when you get out out, out of the surf, just if you have got your phone, just write in the notes function on your phone, or just just do a quick voice record as to sort of how you felt in that. Just so that when you're watching the footage back, you can go, oh yeah, I can now see that see the that that whole sort of thing about being out there in the bigger surf or, or having well, lots of people around me really affected well, me. I always like to say, like, am I having conflicted thoughts? 
It's like, go, no, don't go. Do re-entry, no, cut back. Or are my thoughts aligned with what I want to do? Mm. In other words, it's like, oh, barrel, let me try it. Or, oh, air section, lift the knees up. Yeah. So you kind of want your thoughts working for you. Yeah. Because ideally, you are not your thoughts. Like your thoughts don't control you. Do you know what I mean by that? We're going to get quite deep here with this one here because... Okay, I won't go too deep. No, no, no. It's, 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 it's like, fine. Eckhart Tolle, if you read, read some of his books, like your thoughts are random, just... You, you should almost stand back from your thoughts like you're standing on a river and watch your yeah, thoughts flow downstream. Yeah, you should, but most people don't. Most people are aware their thoughts. of their thoughts, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and so by, by, by recapping on that mind, your mindset within that surf, by just taking a few notes afterwards is great. Then we can look at the body. So watch the video back again and just observe your body. Like, how were you moving? How were you twisting? Did, did it look like your top half of your body was disjointed from the bottom half? I know that that's that's a big thing so, that was that was huge for me was I just this bit did not work with this bit. There was a complete disconnect. It's like I had somebody else's legs versus the top half. And analyze your body. Like, what would you? So, if somebody was watching now, well, some footage, I, some footage I, back of themselves. Let's go back to this guy over here. So, somebody's watching some footage of themselves. They want to sort of work out their body. What should they? What should they be looking at and taking notes on? So, this guy here ideally wants to go there, because if you hang out at the bottom, you're not going to get any speed. But if you go up. You can get your speed again. Mm. So the the whole point of going up the wave is to get more speed, and you keep going up and mm. up, so you can maximize it. So he would need to bend the knees, look up, raise the hands, and jump up. So that he needs to lift himself, not push himself. Yeah. There's a big difference. If you push hard on the back foot, that won't get you to go up. It'll make you stall, and you're leaning backwards. Yeah. But if you go on your toe edge and you lean and lift, the board will follow with mm. you. So, yeah, so, so so when you're looking back at your foot, just really sort of notice what your body's doing and how that's interacting with everything. And then how how can we analyze our equipment? So we got the we got the video footage back, right? We've we've taken some notes after the surf, so we know how our mind was and we've managed to fill in that little box there. We've had a look at the wave and we've gone, okay, we weren't really surfing in the pocket, we were a bit too far out on the shoulder. Oh, our body was a li- it looked a little bit disconnected, we weren't really extending enough. The final step is the equipment. How can we, what can we do to analyze and coach ourselves on our equipment? What what, what would be a sort of key thing there? So so the end result is you almost want to be looking like a Craig Anderson or Rob Machado, where stuff's looking effortless, where the the hands aren't all over the place. They're looking really, really nice. Mm. Now, a lot of people are trying to get more radical in the surfing. So they get really short boards that are wide and thick. Mm. Now, a wide board won't want to go on rail, so it's hard to turn. And a thick board won't want to go on rail, it's hard to turn. But they've got these short boards that are kind of like really, really twitchy. Now, if you have poor control of your body, in other words, maybe your, your coordination's off or the hands are a bit all over the place, it's just going to make the board look terrible. Yeah. However, if you rode, say, a slightly bigger board and your turns were very smooth, then you could almost downsize and the turns would just become easier. So I would rather ride a longer board and smoothen up my surfing than ride a shorter board and look erratic and terrible. Yeah. And by keeping that smoothness and then slowly downsizing your board, surfing just gets easier and easier. It's like driving a muscle car and then getting power steering. Yeah. You actually got to learn to do less. But if you're really doing too much with the arms, and you don't know which particular one's controlling which movement, yeah. all right? You, you, you don't know what your equipment's doing. So, so that's a really good one for the body. When you're watching your video, your video footage back and just say, am I moving my body a lot or, or, or am, I, am I almost still and only doing very deliberate, deliberate movements? So you'll notice that every good surfer with good style has good technique. So surfing smooth mm. with, and stylish is good technique. Yeah. And we are, so I had an email from Ryan Johnson in California. And if you're watching Ryan or, or when you do watch this, then thanks for sending me your email. He, he uh, sent me an email saying that he journaled a lot. And so he wrote down the location, the conditions, what, a, what board he was riding. Then he put down his highs and his lows of each session. And then what he focused on during that session. And then what he feels that he should focus on in the next session. And through that, 
what he found was that his equipment, his board, was that he was riding too much volume, and he was riding too much volume to 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 make, to make up for his his poor surfing, and so that came about through analysis, and he was able to identify this problem with his equipment by going back through his journaling. And I mean, I'm I'm assuming that if he would have put video footage to that, he probably would have um, probably found out even sooner. Well, if you're some, some of those on things. you probably would have got it luck quicker too. Yeah, he did actually say in his email that he um, he recently, so he had a board shaped pre ombi and it was just before he started hearing about ombi <laughs> Now he's realised he's <laughs> he ordered the wrong board. Could have saved him some money. <laughs> so look, we've had a lot of questions come in. Let's jump back cool. into some footage again in a moment. Let me just, but let's let's go through some of these questions because quite a lot of the, the, that has come in. Um, okay. So somebody has said that waveguarding punishes your pivot on your bottom turn. Waveguarding oh. punishes your pivot, pivot on yeah, your bottom right. turn. Let me go that way. Okay, so the the wave period is not very strong. So in other no. words, there's not a lot of suck up and a lot of lift. No. So if you're going down and you push really hard on your back foot, you, you burn off speed. And what they're saying is there's not enough power at Waveguarden, Melbourne, to push you back up. Yeah. So stop pushing on the back foot. Lean and lift. Lean and lift. So if you watched um, the, the CT, which was held in Newcastle, the waves yep. were pretty small. The, the good surfers like Italo, um, uh, Toledo, those guys were lifting on their bottom turn. Yeah. Well, and then you watch a wave, Carmichael, he's pushing. So there's a big difference. Mm. You kind of want to have that lightness where you're creating space and you're creating lift. Because yeah. Yeah. think about it. You're trying to lift yourself from the bottom to the top. Okay, you, um, it's it's like Muhammad Ali said. You want to float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Yeah. So you you want to float up to the top and sting it, boom, really nice and hard. You don't want to do your power move at the bottom of the wave. No one, you don't get scored for how much spray you throw for bottom turn. Mm. It's a gentle lift yourself up, lean and lift. Uh, Luke has put a point break doesn't break like a beachy. A wave pool doesn't break like like it either. Surf surf to it the bristol pool dies out on the shoulder it's, it's pocket, pocket or, or nothing, nothing. um i found a little bit of something in the way there um no sh shoulder section will stand okay yeah yes. so now anyway do you want me to bring the ipad back up again so you you do some more ipad -y stuff while i okay so let's watch this person here okay so uh, donovan said I, I did a great pickup great takeoff thank you donovan Love the love both hands up steering looks fantastic. Even the style looks really good because this surfer is front on. So, and also if you have a look at where they are on the wave, they're right in the pocket heading down. So not only are they front on, but they've got speed. Mm. So straight away, I'm I'm loving this person. It looks fantastic. So Guard Media said that they take off to the wall as close as possible. Um, but the, the the takeoff changes in the last thirty minutes of the session apparently. I did I I did notice actually. I wasn't sure if I was just imagining it. But obviously, it does. It felt like it was getting higher up on the wall as well. It got a little bit bigger. Uh, Darren has said, learning to surf in the pocket was a game changer for me surfing at the pool. There you go. Darren's... There we like, go. Yeah, Darren's yeah, saying. Like, 100%. Pocket. So much easier. All right, so if you watch this lady over here, she, she does a bottom turn, but she's almost overshooting with where she's looking. If she tried to ride this guy over, I'd be way more happier. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> le look where the lip is. 12 o'clock. Just run him over. Try Let's to turn happy. right in his face. Now, look at this projection line that she's taken. So, And how long do you think that line was? How many meters? Quite a lot. I was too busy reading the comments, to be Let's honest. Let's call that, what, four meters? Yeah. Okay, how far is this distance? Half the distance. Yeah, one and a half meters, yeah. Yeah, so... Instead of taking that really, really long line, okay, she could have taken the shorter line, which was less distance, mm. and had more speed to do your turn. So simply because she's not looking in the right place, she's actually burning off speed. And by playing it safe, um, she's not going to have a lot of speed for the next turn. What I do like about it is on this turn, see how she's got her... If you look at this, if you're driving a car, her steering's good. Yep. And then she changes hands to get the other rail in. So there's the hand change, which is good. However, where's she looking? Uh, that way, yeah. Oops. Oh. 
if you have a look at where she's looking, it's over there. So I don't think it's going to turn out into a good turn unless she looks over there and rides back to the power source. So let's see. No. Stuck. Lost all of her speed. Yeah. Where she could have come back, rebounded, and got so much more speed out of that turn. Rob, so, Rob loves your frustration, by the way. Of oh, I get so angry. <laughs> I, yeah, I get so mad. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Carb Media, the start of the session has a slightly more aggressive uh, take somewhat than the last half provides a placid takeoff with a barrel down the line. Fine. Uh, oh, okay. What's going on with, with, with my shirt? Have I, have I missed it? I'm assuming that you're, hang on a minute, that you're talking about this one here. Office machinery business equipment. That's just, Clayton decided to be really funny and we had some t-shirts printed and rather than use ocean mind body equipment, Clayton thought it'd be really funny if we had Office machinery, business equipment written on the T-shirt. So that's the reason why. This it's is also online media business empire. Yep. So I'll or anything to... else that you can think of. But the real meaning is ocean mind body equipment. Oranges, that's, mangoes, that's, blueberries, and eggplant. That's what's going on there. Okay, so um, if if we go back to this lady over here, she's she's got some really good attributes to her surfing. However, she doesn't join the dots because she's not looking at where she wants to go. So mm. she's looking down the line. Mm. Um, so, and what would you say she would need to do oh, in order to fix her surfing? If she went and skateboarded in the street. Well, her, her looking was off. Yeah. So I'd definitely fix her looking. Okay. Like if, if, so, she, if she was to focus on one thing and that was to, because you, you were saying that her arms were going up. She had the steering wheel thing going on. So I think she, she's uncomfortable turning on a steep part of the wave. Mm. So she only turns when she's comfortable, but then the wave's flat and it's hard to turn. Mm. So I, I honestly feel that she was good enough to get into the skate bowl and to actually learn and to feel how did you start doing small turns and then get higher and do a bigger one and start kind of working your way up. So you start going more and more and more vertical, utilizing more of the wave face. Yeah. So for her, just surf skate in the street wouldn't do anything for her surfing it no. wouldn't take her to the next level it's a surf skate brand. she has to become uncomfortable and then learn how to overcome the the fear aspect and get comfortable with those turns and yeah. then do it in the water and with the with the ramp skating i mean that that naturally teaches you to to look as well anyway because you're going up and then you're looking at where you want to, to go. So Yeah, so, um, good... but it also teaches you how to sort of open up and see those blind spots. Yeah. Whereas right now she doesn't even, she wasn't even aware. I wish I could bring up that, that, that picture that I had of, of Mick Fanning that I showed you before. Oh, it was I epic. Yeah. With that picture be. Um, quick question here. Talking about the mind giving you a hard time, did you do a talk on stress in the water as mentioned once before we haven't done the one on stress yet because we want to get kim in for that, yes we? we want to get our uh, resident psychologist kim bancroft yep. in um the reason being is I, I just don't feel that um skilled enough like i understand some of the frustrations but it would be good to understand it from a professional's point of view yes she's got more of the academic behind it so she'd be she'd be really good to have in here she's she, she knows yeah just to all ask, the like, what's going of, on yeah. why am i feeling like that why is it freaking me out yeah. why can't i look back at the phone yeah like, why am i stressed yeah so we haven't done it yet we're planning on doing it we just got to organize to get kim in for that one but we will let you know it's on the cards brent has asked what is the first step to start surfing on rail first step let me let me, let me put that full screen a minute. first step to, to surfing on rail if probably you to, the waterman course the waterman course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want you to body surf and yeah. learn how to lean and then grab a body board and learn how to put it on rail because if you ride a body board flat, you just slide down the wave. Yeah. And then um, okay, another good fix, but you're going to hate it. So the waterman course, let me just bring this back up again just in case anybody is interested in accessing any of the programs. Waterman is in there. So did I ever make you take your back fin out? My back fin? Yeah, surf as a twin. Surf your current board as a twin. Did I ever make you do that? And then your board slides out? Uh, no, but you've told me to go finless a few times. Okay, so what you can do you is... You didn't give me the halfway step. <laughs> you sent me straight into if you got If you've got a thruster, take your back fin off. Now, if you drop into that wave and you lean, your board won't slide out. But if you push on your back foot, you're just going to cavitate and fall off. So what it does is it actually teaches you to gently... Put your board on rail and to nurse that turn. Mm. 
And if ever you're on the rail, you, you will create speed, but whenever you go flat, your board will cavitate and slide out. So it's a really good way of teaching you how to surf on rail. Okay, cool. So they, you, you can coach yourself a little bit there by going surfing and take your back fin out. Yeah, or get a 20. Yeah, and that will help you surf on rail. But, but the, the body surfing side of things, and if you've, if you've been watching these for, for months now, then you will know that body surfing was a game changer for me. I spent so long getting so pumped on body surfing that I almost converted and just and completely just became a body surfer. But it taught me so much about power sources, whereabouts to, to be, to take off. Even Talking how about, to fall. Yeah, well, yeah, apart from that, I ended up breaking my neck, but let's not worry about that. But getting on rail, like, so that whole having to lean in so, order to so go through. When I watch you, I look at your hand positioning and, and I'm seeing all these angles and I'm understanding mm. by seeing that, but... When a person who's never surfed on rail, they're just going to be they're going to be kind of one dimensional. Yeah. And um, I only figured that out through my shaping career, because a lot of guys would come in being bad surfers and want a magic carpet. In other words, a board that makes them surf better. Mm. And if you make them a super sensitive board and their bodies are really moving poorly, they're going to come back and go, "The board's a piece of shit." Yeah. And I keep catching rail. So I had to figure out who was lying and who was telling the truth, and it's all in the body language. Yeah, I'm. St I'm. I'm still so far away from being from being at that point where I'm, where I where I feel really comfortable in sort of saying, yeah, I know what I'm doing, but I can now. I'm now really aware, and just little things like like Clayton's saying about the body language. It it's taken me years to understand it, and I've only really got it in the last in the last few months. Um, Obviously, that was before I had stopped surfing for a while. But just how we use our hands and, and walking around the house and turning around the corners of the house by actually turning my hand and it just just ingraining it into you that, that this just this this twist of the wrist makes so much so, difference. Like I was obsessed with surfing as a kid. I used to drive. In, my parents would be driving in the car, and I stick my hand out the window, and you do this, and the hand goes up. You do that, it goes down. It can turn left and turn right. So just having wind on your hand, it's almost like you're flying. Mm. And then the one day I was in the water and I had both my hands on the board and a swell came through and I bent my wrist and I turned and the board felt quite loose and then my hands were flat and I was like, oh, it's not as loose. And then I did a bigger turn and then I looked and it twisted and the board just kept going better and better. And then I caught a wave and I kept my hands the same and I did the same movement. I was like, holy crap. Mm. That movement is the movement I should have done. So I had like a, an epiphany. It was like, wow, yeah. I've got to use my hands when I surf. Yeah. And like you probably noticed that my energy levels changed. Like I'm feeling a little bit hot and sweaty all of a sudden. That's because this stuff, I found it, I find it really exciting because it's these small things. I, I, was, I thought it was going to be something huge and it wasn't. It was just these small things. As I say, like the little twist of the wrist, the, the slight lean. These things have been game changer. And I, I, I'm, I'm loving the difference that it's starting to make for me now. As I say, I know I've got a long way to go, but just, yeah. Anyway, let's have a look at some more comments. Uh, let me pull this off of here. We'll, we'll, we'll do a little bit more looking at some waves before we log off. Your thoughts, uh, you're not your thoughts as gold. Life-changing when you get that principle. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Uh, when you don't know what you're doing, it's difficult to intrinsically... No, ooh, there's a barrel. Ooh, there's an air section. Most of your realization of, of what the wave is presenting is late. But that, that, that comes okay. from experience, would so, you say? All right. You need to slow down, stand yep. Yep. as close to the foam as possible, and feel what the wave is saying to you. Because you'll feel the wave speed up, you'll feel it slow down, you'll feel the water lift up, you'll feel the water throw. Okay, but what they're saying is when you don't know what you're doing, and I, and I, and I get that, because that was, that was me for so long, and it, st it still is me now at stop, times. Stop moving. Stop doing stuff when you don't know what you're doing. Start to feel. If, and then if you want to go up the wave, just extend. So I suppose, oh, I'm so frustrated. <laughs> what are you frustrated for tonight? This is a good session. This is, this is amazing. Like we've taught people how to coach themselves. Video and just go ocean mind body equipment. I, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to jump in here because Clayton's obviously getting Okay, frustrated. no, okay. So to, right, to right, answer on. that, <laughs> if you're going, oh, there's a barrel or, or there's an air section, um, 
those moves need to be set up. Otherwise, what happens is it bypasses you. Because if you look at all of the surfers at the urban surf on, on these particular mm. waves we're showing, behind them is the best part of the wave. You could fit a, a Toledo or Gabriel Medina or a John John behind them and they'd score a 10. And the person in front wouldn't even know they're there. So there's all the scoring potential okay. behind you. Yeah. So, so what I'm saying is that um, moves need to be set up. And to do that, you need to, first of all, understand the way that you are riding. Because if you don't set it up, you're going to bypass those sections and you're never going to set them up. Okay. Okay, that was a lot you just said there. So it's behind you. So when you don't know what you're doing, but if you don't know what you're doing, then how do you set it up? But then I suppose, but then what you're saying is to slow down so that you learn what you're doing. Okay, I got it. Yeah, I, that's okay, one good. of my, my crazy little things. Okay, so imagine I go, hey, Ant, I'm going to play a song. I need you to dance. Fair enough? Yep. Okay. That's but really you don't know what music it's going to be. Fair enough? So what's the first thing that you do? You, well, you well, luckily, I have one move. One, one go-to move. <laughs> it just changes speed ever so slightly. No, no, go on. Okay, so, so what do you do? You first of all feel the rhythm and the beat. Yeah. Okay? And then you can start move, you can start shuffling left or right, but basically you're moving to the rhythm. Am I, am I you getting yeah, me? Yeah, no, this is good. This is good. Okay, so to feel that rhythm on a wave, the wave pulls water up, it throws it down. It's like one, two, three, one, two, three. And at the urban surf, it is not one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's slow. It's one, two, three, and it's makeable. Okay, you need to compress and extend, compress and extend, moving at the same speed of the wave. Yeah. The guys at Urban Surf are like doing ACDC Thunderstruck. They're just like, woof, thunder, na 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 na, and they just like down the line, na 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 na. Oh, I'm so cutting that clip out. And, and the party's well. behind them. Yeah. And it's like, no, wrong, wrong music, dude. Slow down. So feel the rhythm. If, as soon as you said that, though, I'll be, I'll be, you're probably going, why is, that, why, why is Anthony smiling like a, like, smiling like a Cheshire cat? Because I had the, the, the Cool Runnings movie in my head. You know where they go, feel the rhythm. Yeah. Feel the flow. <laughs> cool Runnings. Exactly. Go, is, Jamaican say. bobsled yeah. team on. <laughs> All right. So, um, so yeah, there you go. There's, cool. there's, there's your answer. It was, uh, we, we got there in the end. Feel the rhythm. Feel the flow. That could be a whole new thing, couldn't it? A whole new T-shirt. What, Jamaican oh, Bobsleigh got, team? Got, got Tristan in Wales, hi. Uh, Rufkin in Productions, hi. That's right. Uh, hope you have some, I hope you have some backhand breakdowns too. Ooh, you're going to have to go back to our back. Didn't we do a program on backhand surfing? I think. Yeah, we, like three programs back. Yeah, I think we did backhand, uh, maybe a couple of these. Okay, for your go. backhand surfing, just stand front on. Then it's not a backhand anymore. Although, the, the, I'm going to say that we're not going to have any of those on this here because it, Oh, I think there might be one person surfing backhand. Most people who surf the waveboard I've noticed is that they will actually always surf on their forehand. Yeah, it's like easier to see. Yeah, they'll, they'll just go Harder through. to do turns, but easier to see. So, um, Carve Media reckons that you can basically fit in three decent turns. Mediocre after takeoff, then power turn, then gravel. We need to hook up and go for a surf together there, as soon as my hand's better. Yeah, I, I was... I, as soon as I walked in today, because I've, I've only got the like, no <laughs> right, we're going down to the wave for when, like, has, has your doctor said yet when you can go surfing? Because, like, we need to just book our pl flights, so, so book our session. My doctor said summer, probably like December when it's warm. <sighs> well, no. I'm, I'm, I might come down anyway. I'll tell you what, if I come down, I'm going to, um, I'm going to say when I'm going to come down and we can, we can get as many of the surf acts people to all go in and wonder, I'm not going to coach you. We'll leave that for Clayton, but I'll come out there. Yeah, listen to what Ruff, Ruff, Ruff yeah. said there. I agree with you 100%. And actually, Carissa Moore was throwing her arm up and over like a, like a, uh, a cricket bowler on a cardboard slide in Newcastle. It's looked efficient. Nice so what I did on the skateboard ramp, I got the piece, people to move their hand up and grab a tennis ball oh. and to look and throw the ball where they wanted to go. And lo and behold, wherever they threw the ball, that's where the skateboard went because they're looking and they're making space. So it does work. I go to type a question and then you're answering it. Ah, that is because, yeah. that is because, Whitney, we I am... We accelerated surfing. <laughs> also, I am a mind reader. Ah, uh, yeah. And if you don't believe me, then... Anthony uh, is a magician. Then, then do a bit of Googling on it, because I am actually uh, an official fake mind reader. 
Okay, here we go. Oh, big one here. Okay. Big one here from Stephen. I don't have it up on the screen. Would you guys recommend... What's going on here? Hang on. I've lost what I'm doing. Would you guys recommend buying the full program for those surfers in wave pool who are not surfing in pocket to eradicate bad habits? Or is there a program for more advanced surfers which also includes future content? I've learned loads from watching your videos and feel I've improved already. Getting way more speed, making sections. Can already surf, skate and ride bowls, but want to give uh, to, to the Ombu hard work. Um, okay, so the course is basically 25 years of knowledge um, but it's not only just like surf coaching. There's there's surfboard knowledge. There's wave knowledge. There's yeah. body knowledge. I've gone and asked kickboxers. I've incorporated guys like Chris Mills from Surf Strength Program. Yeah. There, there's so much in there that um, let, me, let me bring the, the I I can't well. say when and where you'll have like these these learning epiphanies where mm. it's just like, oh my gosh, that just made so much sense. But there's so much of that. Yeah. And I think the, the big thing that we got right was just dialing in the science so you understand it. Yeah. But then um, just the accelerated surfing program is actually how you can train your body. So think of a boxer hitting a boxing bag. It's like teaching you all of the techniques, the punches, the jabs, uppercuts, all that kind of stuff where you could train it at home and then what we want you to do is to go in the water and have fun and learn it so to answer the question um it's an investment in yourself yeah for the rest of your life whereas if you went and bought a board a board's a liability because you get one ding it's devalued walk out of the shop it's devalued but this program and, and as you're discovering when you go and buy a board you're normally buying the wrong one <laughs> yeah and it's devaluing so I it, it's it's a really really I wish I had this as a kid and that's kind of why I got it because of my frustration um, I had a lot of coaches when I was growing mm. up but I was always frustrated like why is that guy surfing better than me and they're like oh just work on your bottom turn yeah they wouldn't tell you how to work on it or how to fix yeah. it if I was obviously obviously I'm going to be biased because I'm, I'm part of the Ombi team I would say that if you can't get access to actually having Clayton coach you then get the program it's there is so much gold within it and there are so many like i'm constantly having light bulb moments from either from from watching some of that and then analyzing my own footage or obviously from clayton um, give, giving me some things on the beach sitting here every single week as well i'm, I'm i see having light bulb moments well, when, when we, you see me smile that's normally when it's we're still learning yeah like we are fortunately starting to meet other people in the industry like you're you're doing stuff with nan baldwin but a lot who coaches McFanning, but a lot of that information is all coming back into the course and we, we try to give it to you guys, whether it's through the lives or just through the, um, the Surf Hacks community or the Ombi Insiders community. Mm, yeah, oh, and, and in saying that, uh, just very quickly, if you are in the Insiders and you haven't checked your emails or checked the group, we are doing an Insiders only live tomorrow night. We've had quite a few of Zoom you. Zoom meeting, eh? Yeah, so we're doing a Zoom. So you actually get to speak to us, it's amazing. Uh, we got uh, quite a few clips that have been sent through for us to analyze so that is tomorrow night so insiders make sure that if you're watching here tonight check the link which is in the in the the private facebook group or you would have been sent an email and then tune in tomorrow night and that'll be that'll be a real cool one it's our first proper zoom session where we get face to face virtually face to face but we're actually going to speak to each other which is amazing um but yeah really appreciate your 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 question there Stephen and yeah, I, 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 I highly recommend it. Obviously, I work here with Clayton, so I'm, it, it's, it's not a bias thing. It's, it's, that, that, that's me being genuine. The reason why I'm here is because of how Clayton has helped my surfing. That's the reason why I'm here with Ombi. Uh, okay, here we go. Have you free fall out of the lit body surfing? It's the best. I've, I've done lots of free falling in lots of different kinds of surfing. This, this guy's new nickname is Mandolf. He's like half man, half dolphin. He, can't, he, he free falls up out of the barrel. Get a 20, he said. Just going to tell the missus, my coach, that I have to get it. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Yes. Just play it on the it's, it's necessity that's for the I, rail game. That's what I've been doing. Uh, can be the next Shane Warne with his wrist surf flipper. <laughs> it's my handgun for body surfing. Oh, I, like, I love that. Feel it, don't force it. Tonight's talk reinforces. Oh, it. yeah, this is good. Arnie, 
Tonight's talk reinforces the need for intermediate surfers to spend more time training on land, on be, te on be techniques, rather than in the water. Okay, let, let's... Can, can we go into here quickly? Yeah, yeah. You, you do that. I'm going to draw something. All right, so check it out. So here... Okay. Oh. All right. So all my... He does a massive bottom turn, almost like he's surfing, I don't know, 20 foot backdoor pipe, bottom turns, bottom turns. He's got absolutely no speed, but he's still at the bottom of the wave. Check this out, watch. Bottom turn starts here. Nose to the beach. Whoa! Legs are burning, thighs want to melt, and he's still at the bottom of the wave. Guys, a bottom turn is a lift. It's like being on a trampoline, get height. So if you do a massive bottom turn like that, you're gonna lose speed. Um, and then look at the top turn, hand goes behind him. So he's like doing a backwards pass, coffee pass. Like, hey, Ant, here's your coffee, mate. <laughs> it's like it's awkward. Yeah. So the, the hand-eye coordination, the techniques off. Um, anyway, what do you wanna say? Yeah, this is good. So this is, a, this is a really bad drawing. I wanted to try and do it on the iPad, but I haven't got my Apple pen. But basically that, that is what the Omni program is built on. Science, simulate, and surf. If so, if you are that person that wants to go from beginner and then start to progress forwards, you've got to. It is so important that you've got to understand the science of surfing, the way that the ocean works, the waves, the way that your mind works, how to build confidence. You've got to understand that. And then you've got to be able to, because we get such a small amount of time actually riding a wave. See, wave pools have opened up the opportunity for us to be able to get wave after wave. But I've got to say something. Go. Okay. Remember we compared it to MMA? MMA, MMA, so mixed, yeah. mixed So mixed martial, martial arts. arts yeah. Okay, so if we wanted to, if, if, if this was a mixed martial arts show, we're gonna go, go study the human anatomy and find how to easily break bones and all the pressure points where you can hurt people. Yeah. Does that make sense? Ben was a little bit angry this day, by the way, that we decided to discuss this. No, we so, can break bones. So if you're fighting, you want to know how, like, I don't know, you can bend someone's pinky like this and they'll be like, oh, they'll be in pain. Yeah. So if you understand the science behind the yeah. fighting, you can fight better. Yeah. And then um, the, the simulation of it is basically repetition of drills, just yeah. hitting a bag, hitting a bag, hitting a bag. And, and we've got all that. We've got surf skate, we've got surf skate ramp, we've got bosu ball, cardboard surfer, um, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff coming through. And then last of all is go surf and have fun. Take yeah. the stress out. Take stress out. Do the training outside of the water, have fun in the water. Yeah, doing and, that, and if, like, if you take, take these, if you can, if you, once you've got all those three things and you've combined them all and you understand them in that middle there, that is, that is just amazing surfing that happens in that center section there. That's your flow state. Yeah, that is, that is your flow state. And yeah, like that's, that's just, just learn. Just, like, oh, here we go. When I try to pass a copy, I pass, but my turns are slow. It's like a snap in slow motion. Should I be throwing the cup instead of passing it? Okay, so where are you passing it? Are you passing it in the comfort of the shoulder, which is like five meters away from the pocket? Or are you trying to get as close to vertical and doing the pass? So the closer to 12, the more speed you're going to have. The further away from 12, the slower that turn is going to be. Would this also, and I might be wrong here, but would this also, because you talk about the ice skaters, when they got their arms out, they go slower, and then when they bring their hands in, they go when they spin. Would, yeah. that, would that apply here or not? Um, not so much. Well, if, if this one's out, you'll turn slower. And if the, this is out, you'll only turn slower too. Yeah. And if you bring them in, you guys going to yeah. spin that much quicker. But I'm, I'm more thinking that what Francesco, I think I pronounced that right, is Francesco, saying Francesco. is more a positioning on the wave. You probably find they might have raced too fast onto the shoulder and the turn's like, mm. whereas if have, they had gone up, you would turn a lot quicker and come down. Okay. Cool, next question. How important is trying to get hand on deck Oh, on backhand snaps. I see the best surfers reaching hard for it. So when you surf in your backhand, you're actually trying to get inverted. So it's, it's like you're upside down. So um, your tail is above your head. And yes, you, you actually are inverted, kind of putting your hand on the board. 
So the hand on the board is only kind of for the landing while your tail's drifting around. And as your fins connect, you let go of the hand and you stand up. So it is a good technique to get inverted. Absolutely. And Stephen, great answer, going to invest. He's, 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 he's joining the insiders. Stephen, if, if you do it within the next like really quick time, um, we're going live again tomorrow night uh, doing, doing the Zoom. So if you invest quick enough, then, uh, then come and join us tomorrow night. We can say oh. hello properly. Uh, what else have we got here? Took my glasses off, can't see anything. Phil Watson, looking forward to hearing the breakdown of fear of getting vertical, making mistakes by choosing the safer, sh uh, the safer shoulder. So think I am the vertical target and attacking the lip with confidence key for success. Yeah, and um, remember that when you go, go vertical, try to lift yourself up there and try to get light. Mm. Like you don't want to go up there and um, overpower it. You, you're probably going to get stuck. Yeah. Um, go up there with the intention of turning around and riding back down the wave. Mm. And I've been surfing for 30 years. Tony, good old Tony. Tony's, Tony's been part of the group for a long time now. Tony, I've been, uh, I've been surfing for 30 years, just started on the Ombi program. Wish I had it as a beginner to have learned so much at this stage. Very worth the investment. Thank you very much, Tony. Really appreciate Cheers, Tony. that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put that link back up on the screen again. We are going to wrap things up. We will jump in and do one more wave for you, though. Just before we do, okay. we'll do one more wave. But hang on. Just before we do, um, let me just... So let me just... What I want to do is I want to recap, because tonight was all about how we can be our own coach. What we've, what we've kind of decided here this evening is videoing is the key. Now, the best place for your video, if you have got access to a wave pool, is obviously a wave pool because you can get nice close-up footage. If not, then you're going to have to do it at the beach. But really try and get as as close as you can with your camera because the, the closer you can see yourself, the better, um, obviously, you're going to see how your body's moving. But then, okay, hang on. Finally. So once you've got that, that video footage, what you're then going to do is, every time you go for a surf, when you come out, just make a note of how you were in your mind was uh, something that scared you were you feeling stressed out were did, did you did you approach the water with a slightly different attitude than normal like what was what was your mindset in that surf and what were the things that caused you fear and also what were the things that i suppose also caused you joy as well what were those moments that made you feel relaxed in that flow state so that's something that you want to do after the surf then you want to watch the video back only focus on the ocean whereabouts were you in relation to the pocket on the on, on the wave how were you using that wave did you did you read it right? So you're just looking at the way that you use the wave. Then watch the video again. Look at your body this time. Don't worry about the wave. Just look at your body. Does it look like it's coordinated? Are you compressing? Are you extending? And then also look at your equipment. And I can't, can't remember what we said about how you analyze what equipment. I mean, for me... Well, okay, for me, when I watch someone surfing the equipment well, every time they turn, they accelerate. Okay. So every movement that they do creates speed. They don't lose mm. it. So if you're losing speed somewhere, you're not using your equipment properly. Okay, perfect. So those are so that's kind of the the how to coach yourself in a nutshell. But you've got to leave your ego at the door. You've got to be honest. The other place you can do it is obviously inside the groups. You can post your footage up inside the groups to get that feedback. This community is all about helping each other. It is not about bringing each other down. It's about making surfing fun and helping us move forwards and and bring bring our eyes. To, I mean, people are starting to say that this is a, a, a different way of approaching surfing, this whole Ombi way. And so bringing that into it, taking what you're learning from us on these lives and using it within the group to help other people and also help other people out in the water as well. Uh, so yeah, you've got to leave your ego at the door or on the shore so that you're open to that to that feedback. And then when you go back out to, to surf next time, don't focus on too much. Just focus on one or two things. Focus on the fun. Yeah. Yeah. Focus on the fun and and and, and also like like you do want to obviously want to focus on this this one. I'm going to focus on leaning. I'll leave you with a looking. with a thought. So on the WSL, if you have a look at the guys who are scoring below fives, those guys are surfing their hearts out and they're scoring really really low. In other mm. words, they're trying really hard and they're getting poor poor scores. The guys who are getting um, the, the good to excellent scores, for them it's easy. So how come it's easy to get a good score but hard to get a bad score? So when you try too hard, you often, um, you may 
push too hard or like the movements are a bit jerky there's yep. no flow but when you're relaxing and you're enjoying yourself the movements become so much more easier yeah. so when you surf and you've done a good turn try to remember that feeling of, of what it felt like to do that turn and then try to replicate that feeling um, and you may feel like you didn't put enough in but I promise you, you like your mates paddling back out would be going like wow that turn was insane and you're like oh well, what do you mean I hardly tried and those are the good turns yeah yeah, uh, and funny you should say that because there have been a couple of times where you've been stood on the beach and you've gone, that was really good. And it, and that was once where I thought, really? And it was every single time it was when I was completely relaxed and wasn't trying. And I thought that probably didn't look very good. But then it apparently did. So What, what does it mean if I stand on the beach and I go like this to you? Uh, no, well, well that, that means that when I get out, you're going to say, that was nice and cute. <laughs> Clay- so, Clayton's way of getting inside my head is he says that was a cute turn Anthony that was yeah. cute so oh, oh, I, want, I want Anthony these real big rap turns <laughs> and if he does a quick turn I go hey Ant on the beach I go that was cute and he's just like Ugh. and he paddles off in a half one so. quick question and then we're going to analyse this last wave and okay. then we're going to go uh, insiders we will see you tomorrow hey guys after a bottom turn when extending and travelling up the face to the lip should I be lifting and throwing to get to the lip yes cardboard slide or should I relax and just track to the top? Depending on how much power and speed the wave has, the weaker the wave is, the more lift you're giving. If it's got push like Bell's Beach or somewhere, the wave will just push you up there. Okay, so I've actually found a wave where okay, there's this kid. Here, here we go, hang on a second. Let me take the comments. Let me take this comment off the screen. Let me bring the iPad back up. Here we go. Oh, I love it. Okay, so. So this is the last wave of the day. Enjoy it. I love this kid. Where's he looking? Where's he looking? Uh, he's looking that way. Oh yeah, he's looking at the shoulder. Okay, so he's one of the oh, very sorry, few the, kids the, the who is actually not worried about what the hell is going on down the line because everyone else is looking that way and just freaking out and paddling that way. So he's looking the other way going, hey, where's the wave breaking? Where's the pocket? Where's the takeoff zone? All right, smart kid. All right. He, he takes off. He goes, relax, straight down. There's my speed. Okay. okay. And have a look. He's not even standing on the back foot. He's got all his weight oh, on yeah. the front look, foot. Back foot's up. Okay. okay. But all the other guys with flat back foot yeah. doing wheelies. So um, uh, I think it was uh, Armando, you, you said, did anybody do it right? And I said, I didn't see one. This, there was one. There was okay. one who did it right. The kid looks relaxed. There's no tension. Yep. All right. Now, he leans. Thank you. Okay. The board's on rail. It's not, it's not doing a wheelie. It's actually on rail, which is, again, fantastic. Where's he looking? He's looking up. He's probably eyeballing somewhere over here to do a wrap. Okay. Now, look at when he starts the bottom turn, which is there, and how long he holds it for. Up, 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 up. Notice the difference. Mm-hmm. Everyone else was going like five meters down there. He just did the short one, two, three. So he had speed going into the turn. Fantastic. At that point there, the only thing I don't like is the backward pass and pass the coffee. Yep. But the technique leading up into that turn, phenomenal. Really, really nice. Good off the top. Um, Zoom out a bit. All right. Now, had he have used the right technique, you probably found that he could have rebounded off that foam and got more push and more speed. Yeah. Although he might have been a bit nervous about this dude in front. Yeah, that's true. Oh, we've got a question. I'll move that. And again, beautiful wrap. Oh, look where he's looking. Look where he's looking. What a legend. Okay, so the first person if, looking at where they want to go. If this is you and you're watching this, um, kudos to you. Well done. Well done. Because we should be able, like, if, if that is you, you should be able to tell that it's that it's you now because you have your faces in the camera. The kid looks relaxed. So this for him is an easy surfed wave. Yeah. Whereas the other guys are trying hard to do what he's doing with stress and tension. Mm. So this is kind of what we want you to surf like. Yeah. Yeah. That's epic. Are we gonna are we gonna end it end it on that on that? I'm gonna leave it at there. Yeah, so let's leave it there. Let's, let's bring the screen back up again, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening. As I said before, if you are an insider, we'll hopefully see you tomorrow evening. That Zoom link is inside the group. It's also inside an email. Otherwise, share in the group. What has been your biggest takeaway from this evening? And just guys, just keep doing what you're doing inside the group. You're you're all giving lots of feedback to everybody. Again, the the group is is full of just really cool people, really awesome people. The group's growing. And it's still full of awesome people. So guys, 
So again, uh, we, we started saying this right in the beginning, is that if you've learned something in the water, if you had one of those magic moments where you felt something, please go and share that knowledge with, with someone else. Like, I didn't learn all the stuff by myself. I'd ask people, share knowledge and get knowledge back. And I think um, in surfing, there's a lot of people that don't know how to express themselves. Mm. Like they don't know how to explain stuff. So if we can find a better, let's call it language, yeah, like coffee cup, like someone might come up with a better version of it and then I would learn it and I can share it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it feels like... Oh, coffee cup's pretty cool. It, it's pretty cool. <laughs> so it feels like we're starting to like develop another language, but it makes sense. Yeah. So it's working for us all. So go out and share it. You're all talking ombi. You're talking ombi. That's what it is. It's, it's a new language. It's the new way of the world. We're going to talk ombi. Anyway, on that note, yeah. we're going to go. See you later on, guys. Toodle pip, whatever you want to say. That was very English of me there, wasn't it? Cheerio!